Now they've since gone in and molded in two more um, placements for two new servos. So now the elevators function as elevators, ailerons function as ailerons. So that's a big change. And then on the landing... Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James and today we got an overview and assembly video of the recently upgraded V2 64 millimeter F-16 Falcon that you see here before you. We've already built it, but we're gonna take you through all those steps. There are some new features of this F-16. Uh, it got updated maybe last year, year and a half ago, but now it's been since updated with some nice improvements. One being the motor inside. We're now at a 2850, 2850 KV brushless outrunner motor. So so it's going to give even more power than the previous one had but the biggest change um, that you're going to notice on this is the older model had two servos um, that the elevators the servos ran both the aileron and the elevator so it was running more like an elevon setup you know flying like a wing which flew great um, but now they've since gone in and molded in two more um, placements for two new servos so now the elevators function as elevators ailerons function as ailerons so that's a big change and then on the landing gear hard to notice but they did thicken up the gear as well um, to give this uh, F-16 a little more oomph on landing and such but the biggest change is really being that motor on the inside so I can't wait to take it and fly it but uh, also having the independent two servos in the back now for the elevator so that new power system um, definitely gonna help on the thrust with the little weight that was added to the back to add those two uh, you know to add those two servos but all in all not much else has changed this was a new scheme on the model um when it was changed still looking good uh as is and as far as the assembly goes everything's pretty similar but um that's where we're going to start today let's take it uh let's take you now to when we took it out of the box so you can see how it comes out of the box and then we'll get assembling it all right, guys, pulling it out of the box, you're going to see, like most free-wing models, um, all free-wing models, it's packaged up beautifully within the foam. So some of the things you're going to pull out, again, you got your two wing sections, and you're going to see uh, all of this stuff is already pre-painted, already got the decals on it, like the wing has the uh, stars and bars on it. So you're going to pull out the two wings, you got your two horizontal stabilizers, you got your, uh, your vertical stab, which has the rudder pre-installed on there, you can see. And when you get those top parts out, then just look around for some of the smaller compartments there because you do have one baggie that's going to have um, your screws. It's going to have your control rods that you need to install. It's going to have some glue in there. It's going to have all the little bits that you're going to need to get this to get this going. And then you're going to pull out, though, you got your um, missile rails for the wingtips. They come out. You also have your landing gear, both the nose gear and the, uh, the mains are in there. And then the full fuselage comes out. And again, nice and clean, uh, you know, for a 64 millimeter model, it's, uh, it's painted nicely. It looks good. So let's get started on the assembly. There is a lot of glue with this assembly. Basically every surface gets glued to the other surface. So just keep that in mind. And the tube of glue they give you is perfect for it. So definitely use that. I use that for darn near everything. It's, uh, it's the same as foam tack. It's a really good, uh, really good glue, so don't be afraid to use it. And the first things first, uh, they want you to glue those missile rails to the sides of your main wings. So you can see actually on, on my model, the paint was already removed on the side, so I didn't have to scuff it up. If you're ever gonna put paint to paint, um, I would take a razor blade or a sandpaper and just scuff up the area where the glue is gonna go. And then the very next step is gonna be gluing your main wings to the fuselage. So again, do a dry fit first. Be, I've, I've done this model numerous times, so I know where the glue goes, but you don't want to put glue on sections that aren't going to meet the fuselage or scuff up the side of the fuselage that isn't going to have any glue there. So do a dry fit so you can just see where it's going to fit and then, you know, scuff it up, get the glue in and uh, place those on. And I even like to put a little glue on the spars too uh, to really secure that in there. Then the, uh, the next step is going to be your horizontal stabilizers. And again, same thing, um, except this is going to have two uh, different parts of glue. So first things first, glue the actual horizontal stab into the fuselage first. And then you're going to see that in your baggie, they gave you two little thin carbon spars. Those are for the horizontal stabilizers. So we want to glue, put some glue along one side of that and then slide it into the pre-molded slot out um, that's on both horizontal stabs and again do it to both sides and you're done with the horizontal stabilizer 
Now your next step's the vertical stabilizer. So first things first, you gotta unravel the wire from the, uh, for the rudder servo, because we're gonna have to thread that through the fuselage so we can plug it in uh, when we get to that point when we're starting to bind up. So you're gonna use the go get em wire, put that through, attach the rudder servo lead, pull that through, and then once you get it through to the point where you're, you know, where you know it's free and you can grab it on the other side, then you want to add your glue. Uh, you know, this is going to take, I'll put a lot of glue in there for the, uh, for the whole tail assembly, get it on all the white parts of the foam, and then press that down. And then I would walk away from the model for about 15, 20 minutes. Let that glue uh, settle in before you get started. Now those are the main parts of the assembly. Now the rest is just like the peripheral bit. So we could snap in our main landing gear here. I wanted to just get it on its gear first. So I snap those in. The main gears again, they're just tightly locked in there. And then the nose gear, they do give you one little grub screw. So uh, you can see here, you just slide the nose gear through the intake and then you can see an easy spot. And the, uh, the grub screw already has some thread locker on it, which is nice, has the blue tape on it. So just uh, screw that in, get it tight, make sure it's centered, but you can always change that later um, if for some reason your servo wasn't centered when you do bind it in. Then you also have the, uh, the two wood pieces, uh, like the vents on the bottom. So those are the only things you need those four screws for, those countersunk screws. So we'll get those screwed on. And that's cool too, because you're able to take out the motor. If you ever had to replace the motor, these two will stay with the whole piece that comes off on the intake. So you don't have to worry about these uh, taking these off ever once you get them on. And then last but not least is the pitot tube. So we're just gonna glue that on. I added a little glue to that, press that on. Not even sure you're gonna need glue on that, but might as well put it there. And now at this point, I bound the model up. So again, we only have five channels for this model. You got your aileron, your elevator, you've got your rudder, you've got your throttle, and then you do have the reversing function on the ESC. So that's cool. So when you land, you can flip into reverse. So I put that in channel five, right where the flaps would be. Um, but everything else is pretty status quo as far as where you plug in. So once you have it bound up, then you can see if your servos are all centered, they should be. And if they are, then you can do the final assembly, which is installing your aileron and your elevator control rods. And you can see, you know, now they've shrunk down. The, the original control rod for the elevator was huge because it was coming off the servo that the ailerons uh, function off of. But now, now it has its own servo in the back. So the longer, the longer rods are for your elevator, the shorter rods are for your ailerons. And as far as the book goes, you use the first, the, the farthest out hole on both on all the servos, going right to the ball links, because the ball links are on all the controls on the control surfaces. So connect that in and you will be good to go on your assembly. So here we go guys, again, in the, finally independently functioning elevators and ailerons on the 64 millimeter F16 is 100% uh, worth it for anybody going in. A lot of people wanted that and now you got it. So that's really cool. And then I do love the uh, thrust reverse. So I'm just gonna give it a little throttle that way and then I'm gonna flip it and give it a little throttle going backwards and then flip it and then not fly it off the table because I make a mistake. But you can see you got the thrust reverse and what's cool about it is it's right on, you know, I put it on a switch, but uh, again, it happens virtually immediately. So I'm just giving it a little bit of throttle, but you can see when I flip it. So say you land, you're going the other way right away. So that's really cool that you have that feature there. And then again, the gear, something you could easily hand launch this model to. You don't even need the landing gear, but it's there for guys who like to fly off. But again, it's a fixed gear on all 64 millimeter models. You're going to get the fixed gear. But, uh, you know, again, great to practice takeoffs and landings. I'm probably going to take those off for my maiden. I, I like it when it's clean without the gear. I don't mind belly landing it either. Um, but all around, excited about the feature. Excited to see the new um, Outrunner motor inside because the last one had plenty of power. It was a high alpha machine, so this one should be even better with that, which is exciting. And uh, just see how it functions any differently because this runs on a 4S pack. So I've got a 4S 2200 inside. Now as far as CG goes, um, I haven't CG'd it yet here. I'll do that in the flight video. When we get outside, I'll show you where my battery ended up going because right now I don't have, uh, you know, I didn't lock down my receiver yet or anything like that. So once I know where I put my receiver and fix it, then in that video, in the flight video, we'll go over the CG. 
and all that good stuff after we see her fly. But all around, I'm excited to have her here, guys. Hope this assembly helps you. Um, again, it's not hard. Just follow it by the book. Again, dry fit everything before you glue anything, um, and you should have no problem. But if you have any questions or concerns, by all means, leave them in the comment section down below. Hit the like button on your way out the door, and by all means, be a subscriber to Motion RC because we have tons of content coming all the time. And uh, guys, love to see you here, and we'll see you on the next video.